time to choose a new project. But there's a problem. You've got too much choice. Let's have a chat about Parts of Shame. We've all been there, excited by new releases or you have an idea for a new project that you inevitably never get to finish because you're distracted by even newer or even shinier things. So over the years you build up an even bigger backlog of projects and more and more models. So when it's time for you to pick something new to do, how can you? I often find myself with a kind of decision anxiety when I'm picking a new project. So that leads me on to something that I'm gonna to try today, streamlining my pile of shame. And I'm gonna share my thought process with you. So let's get into it. The first question you should ask yourself is what type of hobbyist are you? If you play skirmish games, why do you get caught up in the FOMO of battle boxes, battle forces and bundle deals? You don't need that amount of models for the games that you play, so why have them? I fall into that trap many times myself. You convince yourself that you might use those models one day, and as they're a good deal, you end up picking them up. If you play large scale games, why do you have so many unfinished forces? Focus on one or maybe two at a time, build up those collections up to the right size for a game, and then move on to your next idea. And if you're a painter, then you don't need a huge backlog of miniatures. So just focus on the individual models that you really want to paint. Don't get caught up in the marketing hype for the latest releases. So with that question in your mind, it's time to start reviewing your pile of shame. And I'm gonna break mine down into three piles. Keep, sell, and give away. If it's part of a current project and you can honestly say that you'll use it in the next 12 to 24 months, then keep it. We all have a gold mine sat on our shelves, so why not cash in on some of it? If you aren't going to use something, sell it on to another hobbyist who will. You recoup some cash for other projects, they get a discount over buying brand new, and the models themselves go to a good home where they hopefully won't just sit on someone else's shelf for a few years. And if you've got loads of models from starter sets, bundle deals or part work magazines that aren't worth much on the second hand market, why not consider donating them to local groups, schools or new hobbyists? We all know how expensive this hobby can be, especially when you're starting out. So why not help someone on their journey? So this is where I've ended up so far, deep in the middle of the mess. Here's my three piles. Well, two piles. Here's my keep pile, and then my sell and giveaway pile are kind of combined as one. I've gone through my whole pile of shame, and I figured out what group each item belongs to. And it actually feels really good. Being able to see what projects I have left and what projects I'm committed to has really given me my focus back, and it shows me what my objectives are for my hobby this year. Now that we've reviewed our piles of shame, here's a couple of tips to try and stop it building back up again so quickly. The first tip is to analyse new releases. And by that, I mean look at those new releases objectively and ask yourself the following questions. Do I already collect this faction? If I get this, what impact does it have on my current projects? And do I need it now or could I get it later? And in most cases, you'll probably find that buying new releases on release day would push back other projects that you're currently working on. So you'll be okay to pick it up later when you have the time for it. The second tip is to rationalise each potential purchase. And by that, I mean you should think about why am I buying this? Is it just because it's a good deal? Is it really a good deal if it will sit on your shelf for a year or longer and not get painted? Don't fall into the trap of spending money to save money. And for the price of a battle force or a bundle box, you could pick up one of the large showpiece models or put it towards a larger hobby purchase, such as an airbrush or a 3D printer. My third tip is the most extreme one, but I know that it's worked for some people, and that's setting yourself challenges, targets, or limits for your hobby. Examples of this can be painting models before you buy more models, no new model purchases for the rest of the year, or you could go for the benchmark route. So once you've completed the battle line or the troop units for an army, you can purchase the big centerpiece or character model as a reward. I'm looking forward to carrying on this approach in the future to help me manage my own pile of shame. If you've been enjoying what I'm doing here, then please consider supporting me on my Patreon. It starts from as little as two pounds a month and details can be found in the description below. And while I'm here, I'd like to say a huge thank you to Chris Thorpe and Heathen Hobbies, who found my Patreon before I even started advertising it. You guys are legends, and your support is invaluable as I try and take this project further. And if Patreon's not your thing, then a like on the video would be really appreciated, and make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Let me know in the comments below if you think any of these ideas will help you manage your pile of shame. And if you've got any other ideas, please feel free to share them below. Thanks for watching, catch you in the next one.